My name is Gerhard Schwartner. I'm the founder and publisher of Selling Power magazine, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome everybody, especially our masterclass expert today is Thomas Ross. He's vice president with Suascribe, and of course, we'll be talking about our favorite subject, AI as a strategic partner uh, designed to transform your revenue engine. And what I want to say up front is that AI is going to transform over the next 24 months every sales process and revenue generation process imaginable. And uh, my view is that uh, we had um, AI used in the past to improve productivity and for creativity. But now we kick it up a notch and we uh, will talk about how to make AI your strategic partner. And that's a different ball game. So Thomas, take it away, please. Well, thank you, Gerhard. And, and, and thank you everyone for, for taking the time. And I really do look forward to, to having an opportunity to have a conversation with everybody here today about AI and sales and where it's going and, and how we can use it. And I really look forward to, and we will be asking everybody to play as active in a role as you'd like. So we really like to get some questions um, so we can all talk about how we're using AI. And as you hear the different things that we talk about through um, this, this, um, this conversation, your thoughts on it, your questions, your experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. AI has become, as we all know, um, ubiquitous, and it's everywhere. And everybody's talking about it, um, but hardly anybody is having the kind of success with it that I think everybody would like to see. And, and much of the reason for that has less to do with the technology and more to do with us. And that's what we want to talk about today. And we want to talk about how to implement and how to really transform your business by using AI in a way that's really effective for you as a business. And again, every business is different. So today we're going to talk about the evolution of AI for sales. We're going to talk about some of the key technologies as it relates to sales. We're going to talk about the benefits for sales teams and sales organizations um, by use of, of um, AI. And then we're gonna look at, look at a solution and what it can do for us along the way. So again, as we go, and as you wanna ask questions, feel free to, to put them in the chat box and, and Gerhard is here to kind of pick up on that and where it makes sense. I want those questions to come right in so that we can have more of a conversation rather than just a one-way um, um, talking point on any of the things that we want to talk about. So AI is transforming all industries. Certainly sales is one of them. And I'm going to show you how those numbers look across the industry uh, momentarily. But the fact is AI has penetrated pretty much everything, right? And it's created new levels and opportunity for personalization and insights by leveraging your databases in order to facilitate quicker decisions, uh, ways of helping and coaching your teams, ways of accessing customer information. And all of these things can be, can be looked at <clears throat> in terms of how they lead into your sales. And in addition, there are tools now, and many of you are using them, that help you transcribe meetings like this so that you don't have to take notes anymore and that you can actually organize your thoughts and actually continue and take that to the next step by way of coaching your teams with those same tools. So these are the kinds of things um, that we really want to talk about and take a look at. And, and again, here's, those, here's that graph I was telling you about by way of the industry. And this shows you, <clears throat> excuse me, how AI has been adopted by various industries so far in 2024. So not surprisingly, or maybe surprisingly, depending upon your perspective, healthcare is leading the pack. And, and if for those of you 
that serve or work in the healthcare industry, that may not be a surprise. So when you think of telemedicine and you think of some of these other uh, services that are available, many of them are very much AI enabled. So they have definitely led the way. Finance isn't far behind. Manufacturing isn't far behind. Transportation is next. And actually sales is fifth by way of adoption um, as an industry taken in of itself. So that's somewhat surprising um, in that sense, retail uh, and then education and lastly, agriculture. So I don't know if, if any, anybody in the audience has seen or is surprised by some of these numbers. What are your thoughts, Gerhard? How, does this surprise you in any way? Yeah, um, I'm surprised that sales is so low, that uh, the sales is uh, slow to adapt AI. And maybe uh, what we can do, if uh, you be so kind, just uh, type in um, percentage-wise to what degree uh, you're using AI right now for productivity, and uh, maybe uh, share a second number to what percentage are you using AI of your time um, strategically? Yeah. So Can we do that quickly? Right. Oh, so good. <laughs> you that's, have a question. That's... Go ahead, Gerhard. Yeah, you, you have a better question, actually. <laughs> so what industry are you in? And to what extent is your organization currently adopting AI by a percentage? So if you're if if you're in um, healthcare, put healthcare and then the percentage uh, beside it, uh, and and put that in the uh, in the uh, chat, uh, and that would be great. And I thought uh, there might be a poll there for that as well. I'm not sure. Nice. And so what we want to learn is just how much AI is actually being used in your organization by way of of of, uh, of sales at this time. Is it 10%, is it 30, is it 50, is it greater than 70? And what we find just as, a, as an average, just so you know, is that one form or another of, a, of, a, of an AI tool uh, for sales is used maybe by select individuals um, or some folks within an organization, while many uh, others are not using it. So we find it's a really mixed bag. And rather than being led by the organization, in many cases is being led by some of their team. So many folks within a company might be using different tools, but the company itself hasn't necessarily created a mandate policy or system that everybody can use consistently. And this has led to um, some challenges with respect to how AI has been implemented. So we you see- wanna hear, You wanna hear the results? Sure, please. Um, ten percent, um, twenty-two percent of the audience, thirty percent, a third of the audience, fifty percent, eleven percent of the audience, and um, less than seventy percent, a third of the audience. That's that's greater. That's that's fantastic. So that gives us the a, a fairly common result, I would say, with respect to what we see in the industry today is that it's a real mixed bag. Yeah. In fact, AI has been incorporated a little bit here, a little bit there, and it's been a real hodgepodge. And because of that, the kinds of results that companies can get out of it are simply not yet being realized. And, that, and that's part of the problem. So what really has to happen, and we'll talk more and more about this as, as we continue, is that we need to start to look at what the key benefits are but we also want to really focus in on what are the key elements that you as a company, as a business, as an organization, as a salesperson, what do you really want to gain by benefiting with respect to the use of AI? Do you want to automate some of your, your current sales tasks by way of emails, customer responses, um, by the way of uh, meeting summaries? Do you want to create more personalized, tailored responses? to clients and customers when you're communicating with them? Do you want to have data insights from the various customer information that you're gathering? So these are all key things that can be gained 
but it's really important to understand the impact that they can have and the relevance that they might have by way of your organization. So if your key is to really improve new sales developments, then that's going to be a different use of AI than it would be if I want to improve revenues with existing customers. So customer service inside sales might use AI in a completely different way and with completely different benefits than might be the case with those that are prospecting, cold calling, and developing new clients. That's a different use. So it's very important to understand that different tools can be applied against different aspects of sales and thereby get you different results. The other great thing about AI is it allows you to scale. So it allows you to do things en masse. So rather than doing things one at a time, you can actually scale what you're doing and respond. So if you're a SaaS company and you've got registrations coming in for your software, you can set up a system that automatically responds to those folks by way of SMS, chats, or other means on your website and communicate with people right away and immediately create that engagement and that conversation, which gets them in the customer loop, in the sales process, and much more likely to convert. Same is true for many other types of sales. So it depends upon the nature of the types of customers you're developing, and whether it's B2B, B2C, or purely retail. But for B2B, the opportunity with AI is enormous. And then when you start to consider the opportunity of combining that with some of the other areas of your operation, and we're gonna talk more about that in terms of your CRM and your analytics and your ways of seeing what deals are gonna close this month versus what deals aren't. Traditionally, much of the information that we've gotten was manual. So it either did or didn't come in from our sales force who literally had to type it in. And if we were lucky or we were somewhat more automated, they could they could record it and have it put in in, in that way, uh, speech to text. But many aren't even at that level. So what happens is we get a very, very fragmented and poorly organized set of data and data against sales calls and against customer interactions within our CRM. So all of that money we're spending on the CRM has now just created a tombstone database, otherwise known as customer email, phone number, and address, and maybe account number. And we're not getting the rest of that information. This is where AI comes in. So AI, when plugged in, that is to say, integrated with your CRM can now automate much of that, making for a much more cohesive, um, uh, deep database that can now be mined for some of those things we're talking about. So the question now becomes, well, how are we going to do that? Every, every company is different. You might be using a HubSpot or a Salesforce or some other CRM. So the key is to find specifically what you want by way of the nature of the sales calls you're making. Are they traditionally by phone using voice? Are they traditionally by video calls? Is it a mix of both? You can find systems that will bring that in, such as what we're doing today and with a system that, that we have called SourceScribe, and we'll talk more about that, which brings all of that in. So you don't miss anything. All of those calls come in and become part of the customer database. And by way of now communicating back with the customers and your team, they become part of the customer experience. And that's what we're really talking about today. So we really want to, I'm sorry, Garrett, go ahead. Yeah, can I jump in? When, sure. when I studied that uh, graphic, um, uh, I think it's really fascinating to note that um, there are a lot of moving parts, uh, which means that uh, we need a playbook for AI. Um, and the playbook needs to be a strategic playbook. And uh, you have helped uh, many customers um, develop that uh, AI strategy. 
Um, also ironic, uh, I find it that uh, the image of the robot, and we are going to move over the next uh, two to three years into uh, where we encounter more robots on, on trade shows and in households. And uh, Elon Musk is already selling a, a robot that can help you in your home for $30,000. Um, and uh, what's ironic is the, the robot image here uh, is designed to give you a hand, but it doesn't have hands. It still has a gripper. That's right. Well, you know, the, the reality is, of course, um, that the robot has already changed and it's no longer um, a right. robot in that sense. We're, we're now using virtual assistants and, and, and we're now creating um, um, systems where it's much, much more human. And very often you can't tell the difference. So we can already create an image of ourselves and actually use that image to do tasks for us within certain AI uh, functions and systems. So that is already moved way past that, but people still visualize the robot in the way that it is here. And for many of the reasons that you just outlined, but you're right. And we'll, and we'll talk about that. And, and there, there's some great opportunities to, to be, to be gained, uh, to be gained from that. But, you know, one of the things that I wanted to, add, to talk a little bit about though, was that, you know, one of the key elements of sales is the, the, the monthly sales report and where we're going with sales this month and, and how we think this deal is going and that deal is going and, and how's Paul doing and how's Mary doing and how's John doing and how's Carol doing. And, and to date, those have been very, very manual. When you combine AI with the, in the way that we're talking about, you can bring all that data in to be collected so that now you have real-time predictive analytics from a system like ours and into a CRM, where you can now effectively and, and accurately predict and move sales through your funnel. And that's what this is all about. So not only can you help the front end sales team by way of what they're doing with different versions of, of, of AI, um, but you can also help the system, the management, support the sales team with that fantastic data that they're getting that you can now see that only yesterday you didn't have any access to. Now, I will tell you that there is a learning curve along the way, and there is a process by which everybody comes to get more comfortable with this. And initially, when we've worked with large sales teams and we put these in place, we find that they need to get used to and into the flow of using this system for every call and for everything they do so that they can then improve. But more importantly, um, and, and, it's, and it's funny because Gerhard and I have a, have a running um, question that Gerhard keeps asking me for some data that I keep forgetting to give to him. But if I had my AI turned on, which I should, and I probably, um, I have so many meetings, but the, the point being is that that AI can be reminding me that Gerhard is still waiting for some information that, that I owe him in the same way it could be for a customer. And, and that's something that AI can do and will continue to do as it gets integrated with all of our systems. Isn't that true, Gerhard? Absolutely. And um, uh, Jeffrey Gittema just texted me uh, saying that use AI for insight. Uh, AI is going to tell me what, and I want to know how. Yes, it's not. It's. Um, I think that AI requires a different way of thinking about the realities of today and the challenges of today. And uh, I think it's our belief system uh, about AI that dictates how we use it. So if we shift our belief system, we're going to use it better. Yeah, and that brings us to the big, the big question, doesn't it? Um, and that is, what is the biggest opportunity? for your organization to gain by using AI for sales? Now, this is a really important question. Is it sales growth? Is it increased productivity? Is it better sales reporting? Is it a coaching opportunity? And that's very important because different forms uh, and solutions with respect to AI provide uh, different ways of dealing with each one of those 
um, opportunities. So the question we're asking everybody now is, let us know what is more important for you as a company. Is it sales growth? Is it productivity? Is it reporting? Or is it coaching? Which one of those is the most important for you and your organization when you come to consider AI as a company for your sales team and for your organization? All right, let's see what the answers are. Thank you, Amanda, for preparing that. All right, so sales growth is a third. That uh, is very coaching, coaching opportunity is also a third. And increased productivity is 17%, and better sales reporting is also 17%. So sales growth and, and um, growing salespeople, which is coaching. You know, and that's that's amazing. That's a great response, um, and, and that really says a lot. So, you know, traditionally what you would hear from many organizations is revenue. So, um, you know, the actual sales growth. So to see that it's split with uh, coaching equally is to show that our audience has a very good understanding of how one is intrinsically important for the other. Can, right? I, um, can I call on somebody in the audience? I, I'd, I'd like to uh, hear from Aline. Um, could you unmute yourself and maybe come on video? Uh, we are just join the, the family here and Tell us um, your perception. What's the biggest opportunity? Sure. Can you guys hear me and see me? Alina. Hello? We can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, well, the, the way I saw and looked at the question was that all of the answers following sales growth contributes to sales growth. Um, so increasing productivity, improving our data, um, improving our sales team's uh, skill set would all lead to sales growth, which is for us the biggest focus, right? Everything we're trying to do is driving revenue and increasing revenue. And so that was my perspective on um, how AI can be leveraged to really drive sales growth. That makes sense. Um, how are you using it right now? Uh, what what are some of the AI tools that you're using at this point, Alina? Um, well, currently our organization is in kind of what I call infancy stage of AI. Um, we are exploring <clears throat> different AI tools, whether it's in-house built or um, enterprise tools that are already out there. And so um, my goal from joining for joining this course was to really understand how other organizations are using it as well as um, how we're driving adoption to these tools because we have a lot of challenges with engagement. Um, and I think someone had mentioned, you know, just changing your mindset as well of how we think differently and which is required for AI tools, right? Everyone um, is somewhat set in their ways and so when we are introducing these tools to our sales organization, the way they're thinking of it is here's another tool being handed to us versus here's a tool that can really drive productivity for me um, and efficiency for me with that then gives me more time to be more customer facing that would then drive revenue growth potentially. So you you work for Micron Technology, a small company with only 35,000 people, right? <laughs> very, very small semiconductor. <laughs> company. So but you, you, bring, you bring up some you bring up some amazing points, and and that is so accurate. And that is engagement, and getting everybody on the same page with respect to how to use it and the impact thereof. And and I think that's one of the biggest challenges for 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 a lot of organizations. And and one of the key challenges is that it's still too fragmented. So there's a little bit of this over here. There's a little bit of that over there. Um, this person's using this and that person's using that, department by department, right, team by team. And what you don't have is a cohesive strategy. So what um, Gerhardt was saying earlier with respect to the opportunity to build a playbook and to build a cohesive program across the organization, that's where results start to happen because then everybody's on the same page using the same system and having access to the benefits as a whole 
rather than as a small portion thereof. And that's where the opportunity is. So whether it be by way of productivity or whether it be the sales growth and coaching, there's a way to, to incorporate all of those things and made available to all. So, and, and that's, that's really the focus. And that has to happen from the top on down. So what's happened in most organizations is you've got a leader here, a leader there, uh, maybe one of your top people, they're incorporating different things, but it's not coming down as an organization, as an enterprise. And therefore it's not necessarily level and available to everybody in the same way. And that's where this really has to happen. That's where that roadmap is critical. So it's less about which AI are we going to use and more about why are we using it as a company? How is it going to integrate with the various systems that we already have by way of CRM, by way of digital marketing, by way of sales tools? And how are we going to make sure that it bleeds into our revenue and actually seamlessly provides the data across all those departments so that we can get those results that we're looking for and we can see them in real time. And could that, we, that's the promise. Could, could we also hear from, from Steve? Uh, I will be interested in hearing your perspective on what Thomas just said, um, who is uh, really responsible, who is driving the AI initiative in your company? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. The AI initiative at uh, at my company, Cato, is a, uh, obviously we're a cybersecurity company. So a lot of the uh, infrastructure work that we do from a security perspective is AI driven. For a sales enablement side of things, we tend to use it more on the coaching, reporting, and summarizing of, of data points. That's how we're using it. But again, at this point, we're still in the infancy of it. Uh, when you say coaching, uh, do your salespeople actually get coached by an AI uh, agent? No. I in, in the Americas, I do all the coaching. Okay. Got it. Are you are you considering doing that? Uh, because there are about 34 AI solutions that do a, a coaching online with, with a bot. I think that there's pluses and minuses to that, right? I, I, I think we have looked at it and with certain criteria, it can be effective. However, for the type of coaching that I tend to do, I have not seen a tool that is as effective as, uh, as a human listening yeah. and providing that one-on-one -on -one feedback during a call or after a call. Again, if there's specific points you want to measure, AI is great, but if you're looking more holistically, uh, today at least, it's still that human-to-human -human in, uh, interaction. Awesome. Wow, those are great points, by the way. And, and I would suggest to you that the best AI is the AI that does what you just said, right? Uh, and it takes into account the strengths and the experience that you've developed as a coach, and it turns them into insights that can be brought against the data that's being created in a meeting like this and the sales meetings your teams are having. And then with you being able to go in and see your team in real action as a whole, rather than watching you know, 400 meetings, um, you can actually do a query against all those meetings to ask how many of the customers are looking for this information how many times did we speak to that particular proposition and actually see how your team is doing in real time, right? Now, AI in that case didn't take over. It became your partner. And what it did in that case is it gave you immense productivity by way of now being able to see that in real time, but it allows you to coach in the way that you prefer to do along with AI. So AI is giving you the best of both. That's when AI is at its most powerful. So it's not about replacing what you bring. It's about helping you do it even better. I'm all for being better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> me, too. me too. And 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 and, and you know that the thing that you find the more you use AI is that is is what you learn, right? Yeah. And and you know that one of those old sayings that we all heard um, all through our careers is 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 good data uh, bad data in bad data out right 
Um, well, that really applies with AI by way of the queries and the questions you ask it. So the question you ask AI will determine the answer you get from AI. So if your question is poorly phrased and not on mark, so is your answer. <laughs> and so that's a, that's a learning process. So, but we can use these tools for lead generation and qualification. We can use them for customer relationship management because we can see all the data points and we can actually manage how those relationships are happening, both by way of sentiment analysis, by way of coming soon body language, by way of verbal responses, by way of talk times and percentages. There are so many mechanisms available within AI now that allow you to get a real feel for how your team is delivering, but more importantly, how customers are experiencing that delivery. And that's really what you wanna be able to gauge and coach on, if, if that makes sense, right? Um, but again, it's about putting these all together um, cohesively, rather than a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit over here, and you're trying to grab all these things and then bring them together. You wanna holistically create um, a system of data points that allows you to do that. And AI can do all of that with the right processes. And, and our product uh, definitely does that. And I think I went backwards there, Gerhard. Yeah, I did. There we go. Cool. So there's really no area of, of the company that in, in terms of the sales process that can't be touched um, and managed and, and carefully um, looked at by way of analysis in order to improve your sales. So how many customers are we are we reaching verbally, um, digitally, online, through all the different mechanisms that we create? How many are being converted? How are our sales teams doing with those conversions? What period of time does it take for each one of these steps to be completed within our sales cycle? And how is our success different salesperson by salesperson? And how can we help to improve that using this data and these AI systems to bring all that to bear? And what we do in, in, in the way of uh, our system is we use a system that brings all that together as potentially integrated with your CRM. And our system, um, is is called Sourcescribe, and and very similar to many of the transcription systems you've seen, our system does that. So it takes the notes, it creates the summaries, and it creates the follow-ups. But what's really important is that it can be integrated, and it creates game film for your managers and for your coaches, not to in any way replace the experience and the skills they bring but to enhance that. So if I've got a sales team of five or 50 folks in this area or that area, my ability to manage them day to day, meeting by meeting is greatly impeded by the amount of time I have to do so. So using a system that collects everything they're doing and puts analytics and what we call insights or coaching insights um, against their meetings and, and their interactions and their engagements, I can immediately jump in and see how the team's doing and help them improve. And whether they're using ABC sales training, whether they're using um, some other particular sales training methodology, we can build that in to our system. It may already be there, or you may wanna bring it in, or as in the case of um, the previous gentleman that was just speaking, he may want to use his own methodology, and we can create that for you as well within the system. And then that becomes, as you, if, if you're familiar a little bit with AI already, that becomes a series of questions that's applied against all the engagements that are created, allowing for that coaching, allowing for that ongoing insights and information so that we can help our teams get better and better. So this is the power. This is the promise. Um, that, that AI can deliver now. And this is what that yeah, can I, I want to I jump in just as a practical example. Sure. Um, what I'll do after this event, um, I'm mm -hmm. going to 
uh, take the SOA transcript and uh, and then put it into Gen AI. And I asked Gen AI uh, tease out uh, 15 most relevant points that were discussed, but also um, add quotes from uh, people as Alina uh, or Steve uh, were chiming in with their ideas. I want their ideas to be captured as well. So then I uh, get it in like 12 seconds and and then I can create that executive summary and edit this um, in in a way that, you know, sometimes I take uh, maybe just two paragraphs and say, improve this and make it uh, active language and shorter sentences because AI is not a good writer. Uh, it's a... AI uses passive language. And I also always add another, you know, when, uh, let's say I want to write an article based on our presentation, I would also add like, can you write a 600 word article based on this conversation today and use a style that David Brooks, the columnist of the New York Times is using? Uh, which is very short sentences, very uh, the active voice, and always very interesting and compelling language. So you want to train AI to be better than you. And so you've got to give it uh, prompts so that AI can think in the right direction. So uh, think of AI like sneakers for the mind that make you run faster to your destination and uh, get better things that you could get for yourself. Great example, Gerhard, great example. You know, within SourceScribe and and, uh, and and maybe some other solutions as well, we have that as well. So you can actually create emails and, and actually even do a, a short summary of any meetings or any conversations you're having, and it will reformat your email and your article in the language that you want, whether that's going to be passive or where that's going to be related to a disk um, profile that you want to apply it for uh, in terms of the person that's being sent to. So built into these systems can be many of the very tools that you're talking about, including the query. So when you've got a, um, a whole department of meetings and you want to understand the nature of those meetings and how they're going and what the key points are from all of them, in the same way that Gerhard was looking at um, creating notes from everybody's questions here today, you can do that within this solution for all your meetings. So the power of AI can be applied very effectively in many different areas. The key is how is that being managed and how are you able to take those results to the bottom line? So how is that including, in, uh, improving your sales growth and your revenues? And that's really what this comes down to. And the more your teams get coached and supported, and some of this just happens naturally, um, because the more they see they're getting Bs and As as opposed to Cs and Ds um, on their meetings, and they're missing asking for a call to action, or they're not getting the, uh, the deadlines, and they're not getting the information they need from clients, they improve. And they start to understand that on the basis of the type of coaching you want to apply against the sales process, or it could even be customer service or inside sales or even leadership. So there are many different ways um, that you can apply this. But I guess my question, uh, Gerhard, is what sales tools are in use today in your organizations? So if everybody here could, could uh, sort of take a look at this, this is always uh, very interesting. So are you using transcription? For video calls? Are you using a CRM? Are you using sales enablement like SalesLoft or Gong or, or tools of that kind? Are you using AI for email writing, as we were just discussing? Or are you using AI for video creation? Because we know everybody's using AI a little bit here and there. The question is, where are they using it most? What are your thoughts, Gerhard? Well, I'm um, I'm interested in uh, what uh, Fabio is going to come up with because <laughs> he, he has joined us from Andorra, which is a, a big country 
uh, in, sandwiched in between um, Spain and, and France in the Pyrenees. Wow. Fabio, unmute yourself and say hello. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's not very big, really. <laughs> How is Andorra de la Valle? Andorra is 82,000 people, all the country. But 58,000 are working. So I will have my retirement. <laughs> in Spain will be not possible at all. Yeah, it's a beautiful country and very safe. So yes. um, transcription for video calls, 43%, that's that's pretty high. Wow. And um, all the others are pretty equal, CIM, sales enablement, AI for... Matter of fact, they're dead equal. Yeah. That is so interesting. So that tells you, and Fabio, are you using uh, transcription? For for as yes. an AI, I'm using limitless. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and how has that been impactful for you so far? And what would you like to do even more? Uh, well, I I use it um, because after the meeting, I normally uh, take the the notes from limitless and I put in the CRM. And uh, the the summary I will send I send to the customer make some modification I pass from twenty twenty five minutes job to make everything in three four minutes right right and now you've got that in the CRM and you can go back to it and build on it yes I I don't I don't uh, I still don't use the um, um the transcript to create a database for the ai but um, my project is to create a platform for the companies that is called nogenia to to organize the sales tools uh, of um, of each companies normally my customers are small and medium companies here in europe okay. so they uh, they lack um the possibility to transfer the important information to customer because they work through agents like I am or dealers. So this project is made for them just to capitalize what is the knowledge of the company and be able to transfer to the end user because through the agents is not possible. They are not, uh, they are not able, it's not like United States that you study a lot. Here we don't study too much. So we need uh, artificial intelligence to do it in the future. <laughs> is it is it fair to say, and, and I ask as a question rather than a statement, that you would like to see AI even more comprehensively used across your methods in your process? I guess so, because this is not stoppable. I don't have many years in front of me, but I think that the few years that I have, I will be accompanied by the by the intelligence, artificial intelligence, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, artificial intelligence and AI in the way that we're talking about, and we're going to talk more about this here shortly, really relies on the experience, the wisdom, and and the time that you've built over the years and everything you've done to create the insights and to create the information that those generations with us and and and, af and and after us are going to continue to use to get even better. Because mm -hmm. that knowledge uh, can now be transferred by being built into AI and being built into our methodologies and our sales process and our leadership training and our sales training to be continued. So it doesn't have to to, to be lost. It can be continually gained. And 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 your experience will always be there with them. And if it's you as an individual or a company as a brand or a product as a brand, it's the same thing. So that intelligence and that wisdom carries on and doesn't have to be remade every time. And that's what I really wanted to talk about next. And that was, if I can get this to go right, the power of using coaching for AI driven uh, mm -hmm. opportunities, right? And so coaching offers us the opportunity to create personalized feedback and real time 
um, information back to teams so that they can continually improve based upon the experience that you've gained over those many years, Fabio. Uh, and that doesn't have to be lost. And now that can be brought forward to everybody continually. So rather than, and this is the big thing, and it's a question I asked a group not too long ago, what's better, intermittent, once a month sales training, or the combination of sales training with constant coaching? So those items that are brought to bear in the sales training are continued in every meeting by way of coaching. So those key action items and things that we want to improve upon are always with us. So when we are in our meetings and finishing our meetings, we can go back and see that this sales methodology that we were trained upon is having an impact. And I'm going to try and do even better next time. And I can see how I'm doing against every meeting that I'm having as an individual or as a team and an organization, right? Um, so it's very important to, to understand and to take advantage of that in that light rather than as a one-off. So it's not about just the individual. It's about the organization having access to that data as you described it, Fabio. And you described it as a manual process, I believe. So you're mm -hmm. physically taking the data from the call, uh, from the ins from the um, transcription, and you're mm -hmm. putting it manually into the CRM. Is that right? No, no, I, I copy paste. Copy paste, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> I just correct something sometimes, you know. Because... <laughs> that's great, and that's what that's that's. But you know, and, and here's the thing, and, and, and many of us will relate to this, um, and it's it's just human nature. Even though it is just copy paste, and you're doing that, most yeah. those people today don't do that, <laughs> right? They just don't. So whatever step you've got in the process, right, is actually in many cases a potential downfall to the completion of that process. So the more you can automate that and integrate that so that that's automatically in the CRM and there is no copy paste and there is no, you know, no interpretation going on. The data is right in there. That's where you want to be. Uh, and whether it's a HubSpot or a Salesforce, and it really doesn't matter. Um, you want to make sure you're working with a technology that can help you do that and work with you to make that integration part of the process. So all that data comes to bear and can now be used uh, for analytics to support your team and, and your customers. That makes sense? Yeah, makes sense. And every company has a different sales cycle. So one company's sales cycle might be a year, especially in the large enterprise B2B sales. Another company's might be a month, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the key is to get to know yours, be able to see that, and then put all the opportunities that you're working on against that based upon the data that you're bringing in and now you can truly help your team. And once your team starts to use it, they'll love it. I'm sorry, go ahead, Fabio. No, but what, one thing that I think is very important to highlight is that we transform something that now is in the head of the people in something that is uh, something valuable for the company. I mean, a value for the company. If I am the owner of the company and now the, the, the guys that want to purchase my company say, that I have to stay three years because they need me to transfer everything I have in the head uh, just to let the people continue with the business. I say I don't, I don't, I don't need to because everything is 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 just stored. Uh, all the knowledge is stored in the in the computer, so you have everything from me. I don't have to. And also, the company value is higher. Uh, with this process, we can increase the value of the company, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 percent more because everything is in there. There is knowledge that has a value like like a brand, you know. Right. Right. Traditionally, that was based upon your email database. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that can be based upon real data and real engagement and real customer. That's fantastic, Fabio. That's that's an amazing uh, that's amazing uh, insight. What I would uh, continue on with here is to show you a graph that shows you the difference, right? In in coaching in person versus 
versus AI coaching all the time and the number of interactions. So as we know, and every everybody's true in this sense, there is nobody that falls outside of this except for maybe the robot uh, that we had in the picture earlier. And that is we learn by creating habits and we improve by the use and the strengthening of those habits. And as the techniques that we use become habitual, our behavior continues to improve or worsen, hopefully not, on that basis. So what we want to do is to make sure that the things we're helping our sales, customer service, um, operational teams get better with is habitual. And the way to make that habitual and part of their ongoing behavior is to have that with them every time. So every time they have a customer interaction, they're getting the opportunity to be coached and to actually see how they did by way of the methodology that we want to apply against them, right? Uh, and with them. And so this graph, if, if that doesn't highlight uh, the potential impact of AI and real-time coaching, um, I don't know what would. And that is based upon uh, real-time uh, data from 2024. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting comparative, but it really shows you the impact that ongoing coaching can have. Now, this is only as impactful as the ongoing support of a manager who steps in or an owner or whoever it may be to make sure that everybody's online and getting the best of it and, and engaging in a way that gets the most out of it. So in and of itself, that is to say, without that support, it wouldn't be as effective. Does that make sense? Makes sense. What are your thoughts there, Gerhard? Was that surprising? Yeah, well, there's tremendous potential. And the coaching is really a um, perennial um, <clears throat> topic that's underserved, that's not paid attention to. Um, I remember uh, an article in Harvard Business Review about coaching having the potential uh, to increase sales by 27% if it's done consistently, as you described. Um, but sales managers don't know how to coach and don't know how to have a coaching conversations. And that's where AI comes in because AI can serve you the topics. Um, you know, AI can uh, give you a conversation roadmap with uh, the salesperson. And uh, you can also ask AI, uh, what is the best way to structure that conversation so that the salesperson doesn't get defensive and uh, becomes open to new ideas that they want to apply on the next call? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that was one of the points that I really wanted to make. Um, AI does not, and this is really important, does not replace coaching. What it does is it takes coaching to the next level. So if you've used a specific type of coaching, it could be Sandler, it could be Richardson's, it could be Jeffrey Gittimore, who's 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 with us today. We can take that coaching, create the insight with it, along with what you're getting in that ongoing coaching, and keep Jeffrey with you forever, as his AI does. So his AI solution does something very similar. So that's a that's a plug for Jeffrey and his great solution. But the point being is that that's what AI does. So rather than just relying on that intermittent opportunity, now it's there continuously and it creates those behaviors by way of habits. And that's what's really, really important. And so on that note, I would ask a question, which are you using, sales coaching or sales training? And you may have a poll there, Gerhard? Yes. The poll is showing right now. Are you using sales training workshops or one-on-one -on -one coaching? Simple. In my prediction, it's split in the middle, 50-50. And it's not really so much 
that one is better than the other. It's the combination of the two and using AI to make sure that it's always on and always there for your team. And that's yeah, and I, uh, Steve, I would be interested. Oh, no, I'm wrong. One-on-one uh, -on -one is 57% and sales training workshops is 43%. Steve, I'd be interested in, since you're in sales enablement, um, what, what is your perception here? Uh, I, I think there's a third answer, which is all of the above. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, realistically, it, one goes with the other, right? If I educate somebody in sales, then I, I believe I need to provide that one-on-one -on -one coaching afterwards. It can't be uh, one or the other. Agreed. But, yeah, it, I, again, I, I, I think uh, sales education is critical. We always can improve. We can always get better. And as I work with more and more senior sales professionals in, in my organization, it's not dramatic shifts. Uh, what I have what I realize is they know what to do. They know how to do their job very, very well. They just forget. Right. It, it's the, uh, there's, there's an old book uh, called, If We Only Knew What We Already Know. And I, and I think that's spot on. We know so much. It's just those little reminders that we need uh, to adjust the dial just a millimeter or two. I couldn't agree more with that. Go ahead, Gerhard, I'm sorry. No, that's why we need to practice. Um, I also wanted to know, Steve, when you onboard new people, how, how long does it take you to get them to the point where you allow them to uh talk with live customers so we sell via a uh, distribution model so we work through uh vars primarily so our new hires go out and they start talking to vars almost immediately when they're actually engaging with end users that can happen relatively quickly that could be uh either via a joint sales call which is my preference and i believe that should happen really around week two or week three uh, the first two weeks, I believe, should be dedicated to learning primarily and observing. Weeks three, four, I think that's when you start to do a tag team environment, right, where it's the sales professional with a more seasoned sales professional or an SE or even a, a, a frontline sales leader. Uh, but to start to gradually build that and realistically by the end of that sixth week, they should be pretty comfortable to start to have business conversations with customers. I'm not interested in them having technical discussions. Rather, let's talk about ways that we may be able to help that organization achieve their goals and their objectives. That's interesting. Can, so you, imagine you, using, you, can you imagine using a video process where you're actually working with the people that you're training and you're actually coaching them by using the, the game film. So now you're actually going back with them and showing, hey, here was an opportunity and, and you missed it, but next time you'll know that what we were talking about was a point in the conversation where you could have done this or you could have asked that. That game film, just as it is in sports for that soccer game or that football game or or basketball game is so important, is just as important and just as fun, frankly, to work with your team on. And they can actually see where they miss it. They go, geez, there's where I missed it, right there, right? And, and the next time they're in that, they're cognizant. And the next time after that, and the next time after that, and it captures that. Now you're creating that habit. And in so doing the behavior that comes afterwards. Would that be possible? We're going to ask a question, I, I, I think. You, you, uh, myself? <laughs> no, I, I thought it was Gerhardt who was. Oh, no, it's okay. Uh, no, I I'm, I'm wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the, um, the balance between humanity and, and technology. And uh, I think that we all have a tendency to overuse technology where you know we live in an age where we have an abundance of information and poverty of attention 
and uh, there is too much of a, you know, uh, people are glued to their screens. I, when I go to the gym, I see half the people with their iPhones and doing workouts, you know, just scroll, scrolling. And they don't live in the moment. They don't live in the here and now. And, and I think that that becomes a handicap when we ask salespeople to go and make a call, focus on the call, stay focused on the call, stay focused on the customer, listen to the customer, be present for the customer, and be patient enough uh, so that the customer can express themselves fully, frankly, and freely so they trust you. And and to me, the the digital distraction creates sort of a screen between people that prevents them from truly seeing the other person. Agree with you. Absolutely agree. It will be interesting in 10 years' time as the next generation starts to take over how we as sales professionals, how we will have to change the way that we educate, engage, and interact with not just the sellers, but the end users as well, right? If as a seller, I'm used to focusing on this bad boy here, right? I've lost that beautiful uh, art of listening, I've forgotten how to listen, how to be engaged. So we then have to start educating people on how to listen again. It's for us, it may be sales 101, but as this next generation comes in, it I I'm curious what sort of revolution that will uh Yeah, will... because the, the, you're missing two steps when uh between listening and responding. Uh, responding there are two steps which is sensing what the other person is saying and take that in, but also interpreting what the other person is saying before you respond. And most people just, you know, shoot back. The first thing that comes to, to their mind. And that's why, um, you know, when you look at the psychology, they have a term for that called integrative conversations and an integrative conversation is different from a listening responding a responding conversation integrative means that you take a half a step back and sense what that person is saying where the person is coming from what emotional state they are in and then at the same time look at the different response options that are available and not just pick the first one but wait until that moment bubbles up and then you know what the right answer is. And that takes training and it takes patience and it takes, uh, a, you need to make a conscious effort to put that phone down and focus on the person. I love that. That's, yes, thank you. Yes. And, and, you know, when you have that support and system behind you and you have that coach on your shoulder who's watching that and who says, you know, you talked 91% of that meeting. How do you think that went? Right? Um, well, that's your answer. Right? So just simple things like that can be seen and can be trained and you can probably get to a better result on the basis of that consistency, that coach on your shoulder, much quicker than you might have every two weeks when you get training from the next sales trainer that you've got coming in to talk to your team, right? So there's an opportunity to take everything you just said there, Gerhard, which is 100% true. I mean, you know, I think back to the to, to my younger days, which was you know a little, little while ago. And when I started in sales, which was right out of the gates, right out of the gates, and I wasn't doing that. And I wasn't listening. And I know I wasn't, right? And I remember watching some of the senior folks who were. And, and I could watch them. And they were talking. And yet I always talked. I never shut up. So I learned by that behavior over time that the more I listened, the better I did. 
And with a coach on your shoulder and AI today, I would probably learn that a lot quicker than the 10 years it probably took me to do that. Yeah, and, but there's another thing that uh, when I think of Steve, uh, Steve loves to help other people grow. Right. But also Steve loves to grow himself. And and you believe in the value of uh, self-growth. Uh, but I would guess that in your company, if we did an audit on how many people are growth-focused on a personal level, I would say it's maybe less than 30%. They're not like Steve's. And... And you see the tremendous potential because the company wants to grow and needs to grow. And if people I know, don't have that growth mindset, how can you expect them to help the company grow? So you either replace the people and hire people with a growth mindset or impact those people with coaching and help them develop um, a strategy for eliminating that blind spot. And the first step is awareness. And that's what AI is really good at. Right. And and it, and it's about recognizing if you've got Steve on your team, then you've already achieved a great deal of the opportunity of improving your team just by his skills and experience being brought to bear. But if you don't, or your team is so large that Steve is so diluted that he can't get to everything, by way of all of those folks that are on your team, then you do need systems and process so that you can create even more Steves and even more people on your team that use the systems, not the other way around. And, and that's the big point to be taken from this. AI on its own is useless. It's us that are using the tool, not the other way around. And where we use it properly and we create a comprehensive cohesive, integrated system that brings all that data, all those touch points to bear so that we can help our team and be that coach on the shoulder, but also be with them in those training sessions and help them see what maybe they don't see when they look at their own meetings and their own notes and their own engagement because we know better based on our experience. So that's there now. And that's what's important. Can you imagine the opportunity, and I talk to enterprise clients and mid-sized clients all the time that have large sales or inside sales teams or SDRs or whatever the case may be, doing their sales reporting takes up anywhere, anywhere from 70 to 80% of their current workload. Wow. Now, can you imagine AI and what it brings to bear by way of bringing that all forward? You create the template of information that you need against all the meetings, you apply it against the data, boom, there's your report. So now I can spend much more time coaching and working with my team and helping them improve rather than preparing that, that report. And that's the promise and that's what's there. But we have to learn how to integrate that. And that's what's really important. And that's what AI can do if, if, that, if that makes sense. Let me just get there. So we wanna track everything that we're doing, um, and we want to do it seamlessly. Where we ask salespeople, customer service agents, um, SDRs, or whomever, and this is why Gong has done so well with its sales enablement tool in some, in some ways, is it gives us that data. We're not relying on the salespeople to manually do anything, right? It's already coming into us, and we have an opportunity as an organization to, to, to really master that and to dial in to what's the most effective use of our team and improve our sales cycles, right? And then with the use of AI coaching and actually supporting our teams, we can improve the customer experience. I mean, you guys tell me, and based upon what, what you said, and Steve, I'll put this to you, which customer is coming back? The one that was listened to? or the one that had to sit there and listen to the sales rep for 95% of the time? I think we all know the answer. <laughs> right? And, and, and that's what, what these tools can do. Fabio, what are your thoughts on that? I think that um, um, there is um, 
I always say to to my my salesmen uh, that they have to change the mind, and when they go out, they have to think not what I can sell to this guy today, but how can I help him in 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 spite of what they sell because this is the attitude. So if all this experience could be recorded and uh, teach it to other people and then coach to other people going out to sell, maybe the result could be could improve uh, and boost the sales literally. What's what's I, I, I love about that is it I agree with everything you just said. And my observations have been that sellers are not selfless individuals. They do not always look out for the interests of the customer first because they've been educated. They've been brought up in a manner that tells them to look out for themselves first. So going in and changing mindset of sales professionals is so critical. I love everything you just said, Fabio. Yeah, I I, I noticed the difference between before and after, like when you see the people very fat and then very thin, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So here's, here's my, my, I think this is our last question. How do you actually measure your sales activities and results today? Using the CRM, using spreadsheets, and there should be another poll there. Um, are you using sales reports? Are you using verbal phone calls and meetings? Or is it all of the above? I think it's 80% all of the above. Okay. What about you, Steve? Uh, again, uh, if if it's not uh, a combination where it's more than one, uh, I'd, I'd be shocked. Right. <laughs> I still train sales reps and sales teams where I still see post-it notes all over the place. Drives <laughs> me crazy. What's wrong with post-it notes? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're going to close that window. That's what's wrong with the post-it notes. Well, 60% all of the above. And spreadsheets and CRM is in second place. Ah, but look what's zero. Sales yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Verbal phone calls and meetings is also zero. That's great. So I'm, I'm, I, I am consistently seeing, though, that spreadsheets are slowly but surely coming down. Yeah. You know, if you asked that question, what, five years ago, Steve? It would have been much higher, I think, in, in, oh, term, yeah. in terms of um, sales reports. So um, this gives you an idea of the difference between using AI implementation, right, for collecting the data and for creating the information as compared to before. So if you look at the red or the pink, I'm slightly colorblind, so I'm gonna say it's pink. Um, it may not be, by the way. It's much lower than it is when AI is included. So AI isn't replacing, it simply becomes another tool in the process and it greatly increases the opportunity that you have in terms of time saved, in terms of increased sales, in terms of lead conversion, and most importantly, in terms of customer retention. You know, one of the things that always blows my mind is how much money companies spend on getting new customers versus how much money they spend to keep the ones they already have. Right. Drives me crazy. Right? Um, and and, and it, it doesn't mean that you have to do this, but it does mean there should be a balance. And, and AI gives you the opportunity to do that without making um, you know, dramatic shifts in everything else that you're doing. The, the bottom line is this with, 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 with AI. When you have data and data that's coming from all of your people, including your customers, you can do something with it. When you don't, and John or Mary or Paul or Sue is simply verbally telling you that was a great meeting, it should close by next Tuesday at noon, 
then the results are going to be based upon that, right? And that's the reality of it. So when you're working with data and real information that's being collected against the insights and the experience that people like Steve and Fabio and everybody else in here brings to your teams and your organizations, that's where the power is. So what you want to do is give your great experience and your skills to your team, but you can't be with them 100% of the time. You just can't right? as much as you want. So what AI does is it allows you to expand that. And as we talked about before, it allows you to go to scale. So I just wanted to give some, some, some examples. So we've got a sales coaching company uh, that has achieved 80% retention with respect to client engagements compared to their average of um, 30%. And what I mean by that, so this is a company that we, that we work with. They're a large international coaching uh, group. And what's happened is they would lose most of their clients, 70% of them, over a two-year period. Not because they did anything wrong, but because they got the training, they moved on and they continued and, and they didn't use their services continually. And that's what happened. But because of using the insights that are branded with their methodology, just as anybody can within a company, they're now getting an 80% retention rate. So now instead of spending all that money on developing even new new clients every day, they can work on the clients they have and do even more for them and continue to work them over time. Another large enterprise technology company saves 60% against their cost of sales while growing top line revenue over 50%, and that was in six months. So the power that this brings is incredible. The other thing that's really important to note, and many of you have seen this already, is that AI within reason um, is not expensive. It's not an expensive tool, depending upon where you're using it and what you've done and how you're incorporating. It's not expensive. The problem is it's too hit and miss. It's too sporadic. It's too unorganized. It's not coherent. It's not cohesive. And it's not across the company. And it's not done with a purpose. And that's where the roadmap comes into play. And that's what Gerhardt was talking about when we got uh, started. And that's that playbook, right, Gerhardt? Absolutely. And uh, I can't wait for you and I to uh, do a masterclass where we do it live in uh, a room with uh, a limited amount of people, like 15 or so, 12, 15, and uh, spend three, four hours developing that playbook. Yeah so that we can transform an organization in a cohesive way, in an integrative way, uh, because there's so much potential, there's so many benefits um, that everybody is going to enjoy. Uh, and I, th I think that somebody else said in the, in a, when we did our AI summit, AI will not replace people. But a, a people that use AI will replace them, and it's it's the same thing in the in the competitive arena. If your company is slow in retaining customers, in uh, creating new customers, you're gonna have a growth implosion, and uh, we see it on the technology landscape. There are a lot of technology companies that have been stalled, that have laid off uh, thousands of people. Uh, because they have not renewed themselves. And it begins with the strategy, and that strategy is only necessary, uh, I mean, is, is only effective if you have the playbook. A hundred percent. And, and you know, uh, what we do that's different and, and, and more uh, in-depth than what we're doing today is we actually work with the organizations one-on-one -on -one in that hybrid uh, masterclass, wherein we actually create the roadmap for each organization. So that by the time we're done, they've got a roadmap and a playbook to follow that they can actually put in place. And, and, and I think there's one one missing point that um, we, we haven't discussed is the ethical use of AI uh, so that uh, you maintain customer privacy, that uh, you have the security in the system, 
so that you're not going to be exposed and caught with your pants down and uh, teach your organization how to develop the guidelines so that you become a more trusted company in the marketplace. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, for, for us, as we've worked across uh, different industries, whether it be um, in the insurance industry, in the health industry, in the HR industries, they all have different compliances. So we're SOC 2 by way of that so that we meet all of those compliancy uh, concerns and issues and challenges. And we ensure the data security that every client has so that they own that data completely and wholly and they can manage it accordingly with it within the system. Um, and that's one of the key concerns that we do here with, with, with AI. And that's something that you wanna make sure is covered at whatever you're looking at by way of a potential solution for AI is that in fact, it does meet your data security and compliancy issues. Um, and, and doesn't uh, create potential holes in your system uh, that you wouldn't otherwise know is there. And, and when we're talking about, and this is what I mentioned earlier, when I get into and we work with organizations creating these roadmaps and we take a look at the tech stack and the tech stack I get from the operations manager or the CTO is not the same tech stack that I get from the sales manager, right? Or worse yet, the sales team. So by the time we take all of these different lists and put them in play, we've got a problem. And that's where the challenges are. You can't have your sales team using tools within the network and within the system that aren't complying. So data security is a big part of that roadmap and part of that uh, playbook. And it's important to make sure the systems you use are integrated and comprehensive and not a one-off working out on an island that may or may not cause a problem for you later. And that's really important. Team participation is another crucial element. And 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 uh, that was mentioned earlier, um, Gerhard. I I wanted to ask Steve, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. I see that. Uh, do you see uh, the potential of uh, collaborating um, with us where, when we do the next AI summit where we uh, create that playbook. Um, I think that your clients that buy security will be could be potentially very interested in having that playbook to grow their company. I'm always open for a conversation. <laughs> I love ideating. I love. I, I, yeah, so yeah, of course, of course. I think I see. I sense some synergies because um, you know, Cato is number one, um, a an excellent company. Um, number two, that's growing, and uh, and number three, that's innovative. And and you are. Um, in a position with being in sales enablement where you can have impact not only on how to grow your own company, but also how to add more value to your customers by not only giving them the key to create a security, but also share your key to growth with them. Yeah, it's it's an interesting value proposition. Um, yeah, ha happy to talk more anytime. Yeah, and, yeah, and that would be something that would be very powerful, Gary. Yeah, why why don't we set up a separate call, um, Steve? And that's number that's number one on the list for a reason. <laughs> it really is, um, and not just because it should be, but because in fact that is the number one question we get asked when we're in and implementing and facilitating our solution within any organization. So that's that's an important one to deal with. Now, all these other ones are are important as well. The next the next biggest one I would think is is probably revenue and growth is are probably the two next big ones. That's what they want to know about. And here's the thing about AI, here's the thing about digital. If you do it right, you're going to see the growth right away. Frankly, if it takes three to six months, you didn't do it right. 
It really is that simple. If you do it right and create the right pilots and create the right opportunity, it gets results quickly. That's what's amazing because this is real-time data that you can react to accordingly. It's not something that you get in a report six months from now by way of a consumer report. This is something you see right now. So these are tools that can be put in place and very much create an amazing, you know, the thing I talk about with, with training and, and, and with sales is fun. And when people can have fun, they do great things. They just do. And when you can show somebody, look what you did. You just did that and look at the result. Do that again and do it again and do it again and again. And the more fun they have, the more energy they get, the more that spreads across the team. And now you've got a productive team. Well, that was an amazing conversation. Uh, I know we uh, went over over time, but uh, I hope you don't didn't mind. Um, we had a lot of really interesting points that we covered, and uh, I took so many notes. I'm I'm so excited that uh, Thomas, that you um, collaborated with us, and I want to thank you for. Uh, I know you put a lot of work into this presentation, and uh, I think it went really, really well, uh, and it resonated. I think it's eye-opening. What I'm taking away is that uh, we are at a threshold, at a, at a time of tremendous transformation, where we are challenged by two things. Um, and we need to become better, and I hope you agree with that. We need to become better at two things. One is we need to become better teachers and uh, prepare our team for the future. But in order to do that well, we also need to become better learners and, and learning not just from AI and, uh, and the news, uh, but we need to learn more from each other and uh, trade our best practices. And what uh, works well in Chicago also works well in uh, Andorra or in Arizona or in Virginia or where, wherever. We need to create more learning communities. And that's why we have created that masterclass. And that's why we have created that uh, Sales 3.0 conference format and online conferences because I believe if we put our heads together, we can create a better world. On that note, I guess we want to thank everybody for their attendance and for taking the time out. And I hope there's some 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 valuable points. Um, anybody who wants, um, I think we would just send the presentation to everybody. Uh, yes. um, we also have as an additional, uh, for those who, who want to request, um, we have a... Um, for if, if you're if you're used to using AI, you know that one of the challenges is creating prompts and asking the right questions of chat oh, yeah. or, um, or whatever it is. We've developed a list of sales prompts and company-wide organizational prompts to help you get the information you're needing uh, from AI to create reports and information for your company and your teams very, very effectively. And these prompts have been created by one of our team, uh, Barry Hurd. He's one of the top people uh, in the industry. And we would love to share those with you. For anybody that has an interest, just let us know through Gerhard or myself. Yeah, we'll, we'll send it out. Um, I, you sent me a copy. I love it. And uh, I put this in my follow-up. I, I spend more time trying to get the right question so that yeah. I get the right answer than I do anything else. And so this will help you uh, get past those learning stages. Yeah, it reminds me of Werner Heisenberg, a Nobel Prize winner. He said, nature does not reveal its secrets. It only responds to our method of questioning. Well, thank you, everybody. That was enlightening. And uh, I look forward, Steve, to uh, our follow-up conversation next week. And uh, if anybody needs anything, um, Connect with Thomas, um, thomas at soar.com or uh, connect with me, gg at sellingpower.com.